Hello everyone, it's Red with RedDragonLeo.com and today is Thursday, one more day for this week, Friday. And tomorrow will be the test to see if we go up to the fake print or not of uh, 138.86 on the SPY. And as you can see here today, uh, looks like 136.11 is uh, where we're at today. So is it possible to go up another um, 28 points on the SPX I really don't think so <laughs> but I never thought this was going to happen either so uh, this is insane I mean this is just rally 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 with no stop just annihilating the bears everything tells me it should just be a, a flat to a slightly down day because they're going to massively control the volume because it's a Friday so you know, I would expect it to be a down day, to be honest. But I don't expect it to, like, really tank. Um, they've worked too hard to get it up here. If we have a, a flattish day again tomorrow and close slightly negative, uh, that would be what I would forecast. I, I don't think that we're going to hit the fake print of 138.86 tomorrow, Friday, April 29th, based upon the the volume um, of that particular share again um, and this was speculation on my part that the 429 or 4290 on the volume meant April the 29th that we would hit that print so I, I really don't see how it's possible to go up 20 I mean if we're at 136 now you're talking almost 28 points or 2.8 points on the SPY which is about 28 points on the SPX I don't know how on earth they could do that. I really don't think they're going to do that. I still think the the spy fake print is going to be hit, but but um, I think if you got a pop in the morning tomorrow, I think it would end up rolling over and close a negative. Not a big down day, but just simply because people don't want to um, hold over the weekend. They want to take lock in some of these profits. Uh, I think someone said the European market is closed on Monday, so it could be, you know, a long weekend. Um, uh, even though I think we're still, you know, we're still open here in America, but um, you know, it's just something to think about. That which, of course, if the uh, the gangsters decide to do something over the weekend, what a perfect time to to tank the market Monday and just really sell it off hard. Uh, it could roll over at any time. We, we look at this weekly chart here, and we are hooking back up. As you can see right here, the weekly is, is curling back up. Does it have to go positive? No, there's nothing that says it has to go positive. Uh, it, is, it, it is still, when you look at the MACD here, uh, you can see that the red line, which is the negative DI, is still above the the uh, black uh, MACD line there so it is we still have basically a bearish cross but that doesn't really mean a lot because it's a weekly basis thing so it is pointing up but again I think it's going to roll over soon I think it's going to roll over next week the volume is just so light so far I mean look look how light this is um, I know it was holiday uh, holiday weekend last weekend and that might have been part of it, but still, um, I, I just don't think that they're going to go beyond too far beyond that uh, that fake print. Uh, it doesn't have to be a turning point, folks. All we know is that when they put it out there, they plan on taking it there. It doesn't mean it's a turning point. We learned that with the the DIA fake print from earlier earlier this year or last year. Well, last year is when we got the print, but we seen it go up to the print and then uh, sell off for one day and then turn and keep on going back up. So all it told us was it was going to that print. So people out there are saying that we're going to go to, um, you know, I'm hearing 13, um, well, that'd be 1388 is what I'm thinking, but I'm hearing 1430, 1435, 1440 in that range based on this inverted head and shoulders. Sounds great, and um, maybe it's possible. I don't know, but uh, to me, I just think we're going to go to the 13, 
88 area if it's just, you know the spy the spies fake print and I think we're going to roll over there and fall short of the uh, predicted target that everybody is is looking for now if we had a huge update tomorrow and actually hit that print I would be absolutely shocked to be able to call this call correctly number one this rising wedge I mean come on this thing it's down to its last breath I mean it should it should fall it should at least fall down here and retest support right here in this 1345 to 1350 zone right here should it should hit that um, you know that's what I would think because the histogram bars are not producing any real volume on this move we're just kind of trading sideways so it leads you to believe that a, a move is coming and you know you you see that this is so small right here it's it's heavily based upon the the ADX line here which is massively overheated I mean look at this it's all the way up here to to um, almost to 50 like 47 48 range right there uh, it is very much overheated and ready to roll over at any time now the last time we seen it up this high look back here at the ADX line look right here and what did you see a rising wedge that broke down that's exactly the same where same place we are at right now uh, a rising wedge a massively overheated um, the line right here no am I looking at this right nope I'm sorry I've got this backwards this is after this is the bottom okay it was down here it was down here when it was there and when it broke down it shot up and got overheated which produced the bottom there the short-term bottom to give it to bounce up okay so flip it around to over here we are um, massively overbought here on the ADX line which signals that it should roll over and lose steam on whichever ADX uh, whichever one the DI lines is on top and in this case it is the positive so that means once it rolls down it will basically uh, mute the volume on the buy side it does not mean that the negative DI will just automatically shoot up in order for it to automatically shoot up and and really produce a nice down with a really nice sell-off you would expect to see it the ADX line start off here at the bottom it's uh, it's kind of this, it's very similar to the, the, the Mike D's I, I believe if I understand it correctly and that is that it starts at a low position then shoots up okay and then it gets overbought um, and and then it and then it loses power so this is almost like is the engine is revving up and it's just firing all of its engine just thrust and by the time it gets up here it's just coasting and running out of steam and and so here's the same same scenario here it fired up and it gave us the rally as the positive di allowance on top the entire time and now it's running out of steam and so it should fall back down now when it falls back down it doesn't have any any real momentum to push the um market down real hard or to push this up because it's so already so uh, overbought here so even if these go back to crisscross what will happen is this will fall down here to this 30 area and these here will come together and kind of meet so that doesn't really give a lot of power to the bears on this first attempt down yes it, it, I do believe that we will see a big move down like this or, or a big one like this right here but uh, not tomorrow not Friday I just don't see it I think it'll break and it'll be a small move down and it'll just be propped up with the with the POMO money and the fact that it's a Friday and the fact that traders are leaving early and and so it, it'll just get off work off some of this uh, overball conditions break this channel and, uh, and eventually form us a uh, I'm sorry break the wedge and eventually form us a channel like I said in the other video that I think we're going to end up the channel so I, I think it's going to pop down tomorrow and uh, then it could come back up into the end as light volume comes on and just 
end up basically with another flat to slightly down day is what I, I'm thinking so uh, and again it's all based upon what this chart says which is that the ADX line is way overheated and the the uh, positive DI lines which is being supported by this ADX line when it rolls over it means it's going to lose its strength on the buy side but that does not mean that the negative DI will gain strength in order for it to gain a lot of strength we need the, this line to come back down here and to recycle to get below 20 and then recycle back up and then once it launches back up we want it to take the the red negative DI line with it exactly as it, as it did here they were crisscrossing back and forth here uh, as it as it was rising up here in this wedge right here and then all of a sudden when the red wedge finally broke this ADX line hooked and went up and it took the negative DI line with it it gave it a lot of strength and that's what produced a nice big sell move and that's the difference and why this will not be or should not be I should say never never say for sure in the market because it's so manipulated but that's why this should not be a big sell-off move like this it just the chart don't support it um, it has to go down here put in uh, a small wave one down and maybe recycle back up half of it and close out like I said slightly negative and um, just basically kind of flat remember it's going to be light volume for Friday so the heaviest volume will be in the morning and then the POMO is going to kick in and, and take it right back up most likely that's, that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking is going to happen same thing here on the 30 minute chart again back down to your line of support in this area uh, same thing 1340 area right here basically this uh, top area uh, it could go that's 1340 to 1345 which is basically this same uh, area actually yeah it's the same area right here 1340 to 1345 so that's that's your big support area that I see and um, that leaves us you know with the weekly closing slightly uh, almost up all the way it might put in a small tail a small tail but notice how many times it closed at the at the high on a Friday boom they run up on Friday boom they run up on Friday you know just a small small little teeny topping tail you look back at all the weeklies and do you notice something there's very very little tails on the tops of these and since the weekly always closes out on a Friday that tells you that Fridays are generally bullish even though tomorrow is supposed to be a bearish day just don't expect it to be a lot I mean uh, you, you just can't expect it to be a ton um, and um, so on the spy if we come back down here and close in slightly negative then that really pushes it out till Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday of next week sometime bullish Monday maybe then we pop up there and we hit that 138.86 and um, we're just getting too complacent right here we're, we're ready for a uh, a big move down um, soon it's just but I, I, I I'm real tempted to go short over the weekend but the only way I would do that is if we had a huge rally up tomorrow again like I said and we went up there to that fake print if we go up to that fake print tomorrow then yeah I'll, I'll probably go short over the weekend um, but other than that I, I'm not going to even though the gangsters are meeting over the weekend again like I said their meeting here is April the 30th through May the 2nd so you know maybe we get a bullish Monday take it up to that uh, fake print and then tank it the rest of the week uh, that's possible but something's up here and Bernanke getting out blowing his horn saying basically we're just going to keep on supporting the market indefinitely in so many words he didn't really say for sure that he's going to have QE3 but it might as well be the same thing reinvest in the the uh, uh, bonds that mature by basically cashing them in taking the money putting it right back in the market uh, I don't know that's kind of like eating your fingers and then puking it up and eating it again yeah well eventually it's you know you're just not going to work uh, the markets they've been eating their fingers uh, how many fingers and toes do they have they're going to run out at some point uh, because it's starving to death for money 
and you just it, it doesn't matter it will it, it will um, contract and and just collapse it will just collapse at some point um, I think May we're going to have probably about a 10% correction and then they'll probably stimulate it again push it on into October and I think in October uh, somewhere in that t when the next Legatus pilgrimage is somewhere in that time period I think we're going to have uh, the crash the big one the big one so so that's it gang that's all I got uh, again I'm just thinking for possibly some down move in the morning light volume Walk back up with Pomo, end up closing down the day down. If on some crazy notion they pop this thing up to that fake print on the spy about 1388, if they do that, yeah, I'm going short. Other than that, I probably just will sit on my hands tomorrow and not really do anything because I know any sell off is just going to be bought back up. So be cautious out there, bears. It's coming, it's coming, but we're not there yet. These uh, gangsters have full control of it right now. All right, guys. See you guys tomorrow.